Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. You're watching Captains of Industry here on CNBC Africa. I'm speaking to Brian Malefi, the CEO of Transnet. Brian, it's always a pleasure having you with us. Yes. Let's take you way back to the early days now. And um, I've done a little bit of reading, a little bit of research. <sighs> I believe you started as a forex trader at FNB. Now that's taking you back, isn't it? It is indeed. I was a trainee forex dealer at uh, FNB in Bank City, in the city center. I remember I had a flat in Berea, uh, just next to Hillbro. And uh, I used to wake up in the morning and walk to F&B then, yeah. How long before you moved on to DBSA? Then I was there for about nine months <coughs> as a trainee Forex dealer. Then I went to DBSA as an institutional specialist. And uh, I worked there for about a year as well. And then went on to the office of the Premier in Limpopo. And from the office of the Premier in Limpopo, Trevor Manuel said, that is a gentleman I once trained, yes. I want him back. And yes. it was all the way to Treasury. And all the way to you Treasury. were there for quite a while. I was there for quite a while. What happened is um, at, in Limpopo, I was appointed as a chief director. And uh, but when uh, uh, Trevor recruited me, he said, uh, you're too young to be a chief director. So, so he downgraded yes, your pay grade. Director again, yes. So I became a director again of intergovernmental relations and, um, and two years later I was promoted again into chief director and two years later deputy director general and another two years uh, chief executive of the PIC. You've never been seduced by the private sector to, to date? Uh, not really, no. no, no. Is they, there, some, they is there something about parastatals that you really like? About the government. Um, I really like um, the idea of working for what we fought for, uh, and so I mean we can't just fight for it and then and then just walk away from it. Uh, so you put so it down yeah, to your I'm, political I'm really, activist roots. Yes, I'm, I'm really concerned that we should make this uh, this South African story work. Yeah. Now let's move on to Transnet. Obviously, a stint at, at the PIC, a very successful mm -hmm. stint. Transnet, you've now got some 60,000 people that you are responsible for on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you sleep well at night? I do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> what are the challenges? <laughs> what are the challenges that you're experiencing no, my, my at Transnet? My big concerns really on a day-to-day -day basis are that uh, we have operations, 24-7 operations on rail at the ports. And our con big concern is that uh, the operations operate safely and nobody gets injured, nobody dies. Uh, because it's uh, quite heavy operations, uh, firstly, and that is the biggest concern. And the second one is that um, we have a big capital expenditure program. And so I get worried that everything must be done properly, uh, everything must be above board, and most importantly, we're able to account for it. Our budget for capital expenditure for this year alone, which is the 2012-13 financial year, was 31 billion. So we have to ensure that 31 billion is spent prudently, um, that there are no stories about uh, our spending of the 31 billion, and we are able to account for it. But not just the 31 billion, also our ordinary day-to-day -day expenditures and so on. Um, yeah, do, you, do you like to micromanage the process? No, no, I don't micromanage at all. I mean, I leave everything to the, that is why I can sleep. Uh, I leave everything to the divisional chief executives uh, and to the uh, uh, chief financial officer to make sure that the finances are in order and the divisional chief financial officers. And, uh, and just wait uh, to hear if there is a problem that where we can intervene and so on. But generally to keep everybody's morale up, uh, going down to the operations, talking to people, talking to gangs, uh, gangs that are in shifts uh, about what we're trying to achieve, what our targets are and what is it that we're trying to really uh, uh, get going, yeah, Transnet, keep, uh, keep everybody's morale up, yes. I want to stay with this capital ex expenditure program because it equates to around <coughs> about 300 billion rand over seven years. Indeed. And most of that you have leveraged off your own balance sheet. Yes, two thirds of it. Why have you decided to not dip into the fiscus for, for further funding? No, we think that uh, that was absolutely unnecessary at the moment. There are other priorities that the fiscus require, uh, has, uh, health, education, welfare, and um, the whole uh, capital investment by government. Uh, and so if we could pull off a 300 billion capital expenditure program without going to the fiscus, 
uh, then that should be our contribution. 86 uh, billion of that is debt. 86 billion of that is debt. You see, the, the 300 billion does not re re represent the, the, the required capital. Which is more like 500 billion. Which is more like 500 billion. So 300 billion is what we can do, and that is what we're going to try and do. Because if we go over 300 billion, the <coughs> the debt equity ratios change and uh, they get out of sync and uh, we get into trouble with the borrowers and uh, and maybe have to go for guarantees and things like that so but we're trying to do it in such a way that we don't get um, we don't increase government's contingent liabilities or government's uh, debt because if we ask for it from the fiscus the fiscus has to borrow because they have a deficit the timing of your one billion rand bond was uh appropriate given the the rating agency activity we've seen around transnet lately y you happy you're not in new york now trying to raise money it was a little more than one billion it was a billion dollars a billion dollars yes. <laughs> forever correcting me on the numbers i yes. meant one billion yes. dollars a billion dollars uh in the in new york uh, that we issued in the u.s uh, markets um that was uh, to fund this year's uh, capital expenditure program uh, of the 31 billion that we were supposed to spend for this year, we had to borrow 14.1 billion, and that what one billion was about uh, eight billion out of the 14 billion, and the rest we did on the domestic markets and uh, with bank loans and so on. So the funding for this year, because it's now the end of the year, has been done. Uh, so we did not have a problem with uh, funding the 31 billion for the year. Talk to me now about the the rating agencies uh, and whether they are impacting your plans negatively. Not at all. The rating agencies were at pains to explain that, um, <coughs> especially Standard & Poor's, that uh, our downgrade was not as a result of anything that we as Transnet has done, but it was because the sovereign was being downgraded and so they had to downgrade all the other parastatals. Moody's was much more mature about it. Uh, they said they will downgrade the sovereign, uh, which is the Republic of South Africa, but they left Transnet. And they said that we don't see any reason why we should downgrade you. And we hope they could talk sense into Standard & Poor's, but that didn't happen. With the, the Standard & Poor's downgrade, do you think that that's going to have a direct in impact on, on an investor appetite for Transnet particularly? Investors actually these days don't rely so heavily on the ratings. Uh, by It helps to mention that you had a, an investment grade and that you are rated by Moody's and by Standard & Poor's. But uh, increasingly, analysts may do their homework and they understand the credit uh, before they borrow, so they, 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 before they lend money. And so the price that you pay is actually a reflection of how well you've been able to communicate what you're trying to do with the analysts. The analysts rule the world. What has been your biggest challenge in leading Transnet to this point? You've been there for two years, one month. The biggest challenge really has been I mean, it was easy enough to come up with a 300 billion program to say that we're going to do things. The biggest challenge is to get an organization of 60,000 people to get going in a particular direction. Uh, and this has been the first year of the seven-year program. Uh, and we have successes, we had failures, uh, but it has to do with uh, an unwieldy organization that needs to be mobilized to have a common vision, uh, to get the communications people to focus more on internal communications so that the workers know what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve, to get the gangs to understand their targets, uh, and so to explain how we're paying incentives and why incentives will be paid and why everybody has to move in a particular direction and that that has been the biggest challenge in fact I think that is the job of the CEO not to do the work but to get as a cheerleader really uh, uh, to get the organization enthused and uh, working and that has been my occupation at Transnet yeah you said you need more like 500 billion to fund the the capex that that is required yes you've got 300 billion <coughs> of that now mention has been made of more private sector involvement and this yes. comes to a relatively sensitive issue there is a level of mistrust between the private sector and government do you think we are going some way to bridging that gap or is it is it rife i think the feeling is mutual really if you think about it the you mean government doesn't <laughs> trust the private sector either uh, the, pri <laughs> the private <laughs> sector doesn't trust government as well uh, but um, uh, no, I think that uh, there is a scope for private sector involvement in what the government sector is doing. What people should really understand is that uh, theory tells us that there are things that government are not good at. 
And, like and what? If government, I'm going to ask you to elaborate without getting into trouble now. Like running a travel agency. Uh, you know, tr Transnet used to own a travel agency that uh, was eventually sold off. I mean, there's no market failure in uh, the market of travel agencies. There's no reason why people should be phoning Transnet to book their aeroplane tickets. Um, there is a perfectly working um, uh, 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 Industry out there, dry cleaning. You can take your dry cleaners to the corner so shop. So government must stay out of travel and dry cleaning so far. Travel and dry cleaning and the small businesses and so on. But, but what should they be involved in? In, your in the things that have huge externalities, uh, where the private sector will fail. So, like where there is private sector failure. For example, the lighthouse. Now the lighthouse has huge externalities. Somebody has to provide the lighthouse and all the vessels, all the ships at sea will be able to see the light. But none, no individual one of the vessels or the ships has an incentive to build a lighthouse for everybody. The expenditure is too big for a small fishing vessel uh, and yet they need the service. And so that is where government comes in and that is where uh, government uh, is successful. So where there is Should huge infrastructure, infrastructure that But then why are they not proving successful when it comes to South African Airways? I mean, that story is well documented. Well, I'm not sure that uh, South African Airways is not successful. Maybe the numbers don't add up for this year or for last year, but you know, you can go to the airport, buy a ticket and get into an aeroplane to Cape Town and uh, have a decent service. Uh, you can, today, in Hong Kong, there is a South African Airways... Uh, well, Brian, you are a numbers man. Metal with you're a South a African You're a numbers flag. man. Yes, yes. At the end of the day, the business has to be sustainable from a financial perspective. And that is one aspect of it. The accounting profits, the, uh, the, uh, the finances from an accounting point of view have to add up. But government goes beyond that. And government gets involved in operations where it is not even profitable. Uh, the lighthouse, for example. The lighthouse doesn't have to be profitable because the service is to point out the rocks to the vessels. And that is what government will have achieved its objective if there is no accident at sea. And so with South African Airways, we have a service uh, that uh, is provided by a state-owned entity uh, that ensures that South Africa has its metal, uh, its flag, in the major airports of the world. This uh, morning, agreed, there's a flight agreed. from But South at the Africa. end of the day, we are, the, we the, are the, in agreement the on the fact that the numbers need to add up. The numbers need to add up as well. I'm speaking to Brian Malefi, the CEO of Transnet.